Everybody is obsessed with giant swords because of anime and stuff like that, but there are actual examples of real historical giant swords, and today we're going to talk about them. So these are Montante trainers. They're the Go Now trainers from Purple Heart Armory, um, and we're using these for a number of reasons. I do have real steel Montantes. I left them at home, and I'm on the, on the road right now because I am the traveling sword hobo, but Realistically, you cannot spar with them. You can, but you have to be very controlled. Not safely. Not, not safely. at realistic speeds, of no. course. Uh, the problem is, a, a long sword weighs somewhere between 2.5 and 3.5 pounds. A Montante or any other great sword weighs somewhere between 6 and 8 pounds, which is double the weight of the long sword. The long sword can already break bones. A fetter can if you're, if you're out of control with it. And the Montante is almost all uh, momentum-based, so it's all of this, which is really really powerful. It's it's frankly not safe to spar with. It's not safe. It's just not safe. So, uh, like I said before, I do love these padded sword trainers. They are great for, for uh, drilling and things like that, but they are not the same as real swords. They lack some of the tactile feel of a blade mm -hmm. and some other things, but because of the safety issue, we cannot fence with real swords. So this is gonna be our stand-in today. We just wanna get that caveat out of the way because we think it's really important that you know that this is not a 100% recreation of that. Uh, we don't wanna be telling you this is exactly how it would have been when it's not. We wanted to make a slight note about this too. So we're not experts on Montantes. We're experimenting with these from the sources that we have access to. This isn't the whole picture. We're just kind of doing a thought experiment and looking at these and giving you the information. This is just kind of a fun video to give you a taste of these. There are great sort of experts out there yes. and it's neither of us. Neither of us. <laughs> we're, we're, we're enthusiasts on this subject, not experts. We like big swords as much as the next guy. We bite big swords and we cannot lie. <laughs> Horrible. 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 That's so, that with that said, these are not the same weight because of the safety issue, but they're they're relatively uh, they're good. Pretty beefy. They're beefy, but they're good representations of how a montante would feel and move. Yeah. So these these would be either montantes or zweihand. The the term is basically the sword is basically the same through every culture. There are minor differences. Language. Montante, zweihander. Uh, Spadona. So these would not be used like you see in anime, where it's this big old uh, ah, right? That's kind of the idea of how these were used. But these were actually used more like momentum weapons, and they would get up to speed and they'd start spinning these and attacking like this, stuff like that. You probably wouldn't have two of them fighting each other. No. We just have these for demonstration purposes. The, the, the places these would be used are actually interesting. So the first place, I think the primary place would have been on the battlefield, right? Yeah. So these are basically pole arms, just like a uh, halberd or something like that. Yeah. And, and kind of the idea would be, let's say you've got a spear. Well, I have a big, a big p pike. He's a pike, and he, there's a bunch of his friends in line, all pointing at my shield wall. My guy's over here. We're trying to kill each other, but there's shields and everything else. So then the guy with the montante comes in, and he snags as many as his as he can, and he either breaks off the heads if he's lucky, or yeah. just put it back out, I wanted the camera to see. He breaks off the heads if he's lucky, or he takes down these sp spears, and now there's a hole in this line. My, my right guys, m yeah, my guys can now stab him and kill him. So these guys would be heavily armored, they'd come out, they'd take down, they, were they the double pay? Yeah, yeah the, the do doppel soldiers. Do doppel, doppelgeld? Something like that. Yeah, double gold, because they got paid more because they were big and beefy and they had a really, really hard job. And they could die. And they could die. So that's one way they would be used. Another way they would be used is for kind of like a crowd control situation. Aerial denial. Aerial, de aerial denial? Area denial. Area denial. Aerial denial. <laughs> no princesses here. <laughs> oh. Area denial. So um, for this, let's go ahead and grab the other swords. Yeah. The scenario that we'd be dealing with would be kind of denying me access to an area um, there's some manuals, some, there's some sources that talk yeah. about how like you'd be escorting a noble and you'd be the hired muscle. Uh, so he's the hired lands connect. That, that tree, you ain't get, getting to her. <laughs> yeah, that or they're behind you, like they're, you're, you're escorting them out, they, they're there and you've got to like fend off all the people as they go by. Um, so I'm the bandit or something else. So let's look at the difference in these swords. This is a foam padded go now long sword. I love these. Uh, this is this is kind of an appropriate height. This is the difference in the height of these swords. It's pretty extreme. So I am going to try and get in and get him. <laughs> I just knocked it out of the way. I cannot. Surprise attack. 
Take that out. It's gonna fall out again. Bloopers. Let's try it again. Ready? Here we go. Take two. Oh. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I keep trying to take his sword strongly, and there's just so much mass and momentum behind. It, he keeps pushing it to the side. He could also be doing this in such a way if there's multiple people coming at him, kind of do the circle of death. So he's got there, he's got behind him, he's got this. It's just a big nasty sword swinging around. So the idea is if he actually made contact with somebody, it would probably get stuck. And then he's got somebody else who will stab him, right? <laughs> he's not invincible. But you can see when he's swinging this thing around, it's big enough and long enough that you don't want to get close because getting hit with that thing is yeah. probably going to... It's not, it might not kill you instantly, but like it's a giant sword with a lot of weight behind it. It really is a team thing. This, if you actually down somebody with it, you're kind of down too, because your big error denial's gone. It really is, I'm gonna make you remove your option so my buddy can either stab you with his spear on the battlefield, or I can get you, give him a shot to, to come in. It's The thing about this, right, is that it is scary. And one of the things we have to remember about this is in sparring, if you get hit, you just reset. In life, if you got hit with this thing, it was bad. So you reset. People, people would be, yeah, you reset. People would be a little bit less likely to charge in and take on this guy. So if he's swinging this giant thing around and I've only got this sword here and he like keeps blowing past my sword, I don't wanna get hit with that. So I've either gotta try and find a, <laughs> find a way to like get the hands when he's got more reach on me, time it right and hope or I'm gonna stay back. When using it like that, it's not really for sword fighting so much as it's get back. Now, like we said, if you're up in here and using like a pole arm, it becomes a totally different weapon. Yeah. So we go from trying to keep multiple people away, kind no, of a deal, get away I... from me, to like, I'm here oh, no. and now I've got, I I've, got a, I've got a spear. So if I'm using it like this, I've got a spear, it's totally different. I can have, oh, my mic. my mic. So if I'm using it like a spear, I've got all this hand protection. I've absolutely got a viable I weapon. Even... Yeah, I've got, this is perfect. So if I've got, if I'm fighting one person, I've got this. So not quite the giant enemy sword everybody expects it to be. Very nimble, very fast. But yeah. we are gonna do some sparring with this. This is just kind of a light demo. I don't know, do you think it's too rambly? Uh. So with that, we all geared up and started doing some Montante combat. Each of us took a turn being a Montante wielder against three attackers with synthetic long swords. It took a bit of calibration to get the hang of it. These are not easy weapons to fight with and none of us have a lot of experience with it. But once we got the hang of it, things started to go really well for the Montante. Yeah, you want that? Broke you on my head. Could you have gotten your vision within the head? I'm not sure. I think I think broke the head. One of the early issues was understanding when someone was actually down or not. So we kind of erred on the side of caution and if they got hit solidly, that was them being out no matter where it was on the body. No. Another thing we ran into a lot was suicidal doubling, and this is going to come up a lot in this video because, of course, these aren't real swords, so no one's really afraid to die. But really, when the Montante gets taken out, it's almost inevitably by somebody who is dying along with them. Early on, we also found that it was death to get backed up into a corner and get the Montante caught on something. We also saw that there was a balance between being aggressive and defensive. If you got too greedy with a Montante, you'd get dispatched really quickly. You wanted to keep people at bay with big swings and not overdo it. We wanted to see if the Montante was making any difference at all, so we gave the outnumbered party a long sword, and these are the results. Yeah, 
The Montante is actually a later period sword, so it probably wouldn't have seen a lot of combat against something with a long sword. It would be more accurately done against single-handed swords like side swords, rapiers, and things like that. So we decided to try an experiment where the Montante faced three single-handed swords, and actually the Montante did a lot better. We wanted to see if two Montantes working together could be more formidable. We added an extra attacker just to keep things a little bit spicy. But actually, we found that this was worse than one Montante.
So after we did our experiment, first we have to note that these swords are not steel swords. They do not react like a steel sword would. This is a thought experiment and it's not a conclusive, uh, definitive experiment that proves anything. It's just kind of like what would maybe happen. With that out of the way, let's talk about the results. So we did uh, exploring with just the Montante versus uh, long swords, which is a little bit historically accurate because long swords probably wouldn't have been on the battlefield quite as much or in the, or in the streets when the Montante was around. But how do we feel about long swords versus Montante? It sucks. It sucks? It yeah. sucks, but it was also the best it, um, matchup. Yeah, so one Montante versus three long swords, it was still in the Montante's favor. At least, at least two of the long swords were going to die. Yeah. I don't yeah. think we have even one where, where the where the long swords killed the Montante. That's not of a, like a lucky shot. Yeah, a lucky really. shot. If the Montante kept spinning and moving, it was just we have the advantage of, of respawning, right? If we were actually doing this, we would be much more afraid of getting in there and doing that. Mostly, when the Montante died, it was a suicidal double. I think that was yeah, universal in the case. Yeah. Almost every yeah. time the Montante died is because one of us decided to kill ourselves. Now, the Montante was used in battle in the battlefield to take down like high and stuff. But uh, in the scenario we were testing against a civilian defense situation, we're probably robbers. Yeah. Robbers are historically pretty greedy. Um, or the robbers are bandits. We're, we're some sort of neighbor dwellers. We're probably not going to sacrifice ourselves for the greater good. Yeah. Um, so I think that that was a point against uh, swords against the Montante. Yeah. How do we feel about when we did any other talks? Thoughts about long swords versus Montante? Best counter, uh, at least in my limited experience, of a total of six rounds from Montante. Uh, if you can catch them in a rhythm and time your parry, you can ground their point, kill all their momentum, and your buddies can close in for the kill. Longsword could parry the Great Sword surprisingly well. N yes. Nothing else could. The Longsword would. If you caught, let me grab, just hold on a second. Boss here and a good structure, you got it. Like, and we did this experiment with steel ones too. I had Bo from, uh, from, from East Texas, a big guy, swinging me with a real Montante against the Longsword, and I can very easily parry it like this. Easy, right? But the problem is getting it there. He's swinging that thing around, he's got different angles going. I've got to time it right, and then he can also come right off of it. Right? He's not just going to stay there. So it's doable, but it was hard. How do we think about the single-handed sword? So much worse. So much worse. Do we have one of those? Worse. Yeah. Here's one. You couldn't parry at all. You couldn't. It went through. Yeah, so single-handed single swords, there was just... So they would have had complex hilts at the time. So we were simulating side swords and maybe rapiers, maybe. maybe. Um, at the time, that these would have been there. Maybe an iron sword? But but realistically, it just didn't... Go ahead and swing me. I, I'll, I won't be fine. It doesn't have... Go ahead and give it to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try and pair it like this. It's just nothing. No. I'm gonna try as hard as I can. Yeah, there's nothing. There's just not enough leverage. There's not enough anything. That's and if we get into a bind or something, even if I get this strong, yeah, it's, not yeah, it's really tough. So I don't think these are a good match. The only time that these ever won was when we out when I got I got I got a couple of kills with Montante with this. And what I did was I waited for him to kill my friend and come up behind him and stab him. Right. And uh, realistic, yeah. So it also yeah, count on my friend being dumb and getting killed. Yeah. Or you so could push him. You could push your friend into him. Any other thoughts? The robbers, right? <laughs> any other? Uh, any other thoughts? Had one guy that had a buckler. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The foam buckler could parry, but it was always very straight line standing. Yeah. I don't think real. Realistically, be particularly effective against it. it. When I brace the muffler against the sword, it's a good, yeah, I think yeah. it worked way better. Yeah, yeah and I think I think I the big thing is just the montante in motion is so hard to track mm -hmm. if, if you're panicked. Now, I will say this: we did the same experiment to make sure that it wasn't just like, oh, it's not that hard to fight multiple opponents. We did long sword, one guy with a long sword versus three guys with a long sword. Every single time, instant death. Instant death. No instant. The montante made a huge difference. Yeah. Um, didn't matter who it was, the long sword versus three guys with long swords. Yeah. Good shot. Any other thoughts on any of this? I think even with the complex guard, right? If you catch it, the Montante is probably gonna shear through the guard. You think? I think so. Just based on the like materials that a lot of the like guards on complex guard swords were made out of, I don't think they would hold up to like something with the momentum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this yeah. is not as heavy as a real Montante. Yeah, right? again, the, no. these are these are synthetic. This, this is pretty beefy. Um, and again, the reason that we're using this and not steel is because it is completely unsafe. Defense of the steel Montante with any kind of real power. So we could, it, the choices were really don't do any experiment or do one with a couple of limitations. Um, one interesting thing is we had a really large space here, and yeah. even with just one, he ran a space really quick. Every time the Montante died, it's because he got back in into back war and he lost options. Which brings me to two Montantes versus four attackers. How is that? 
kind of almost worse. Worse. Yeah. I felt like I got caught. I, I was so worried about hitting my other Montante friend that I I was like I got killed immediately. Yeah. When the other Montante died, the it other one generally survived yes. because the w Montante would take one or two with him. Yeah. But yeah. it wasn't until he died that it got easy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the best way I felt to run that was to have one swing and then the other shift to half sword and use as a short pike. And I think uh, the other thing that we have to note is this is a lot of space. A medieval town Not wouldn't have, like maybe the town center would have this much space, but they're going to be narrow streets and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So the idea of running out of space is a huge you deal. a lot of space. Yeah. Even with just one, you know, this is a lot of space. Now, we yeah. didn't, we did, there's one thing that we didn't really cover in this, and that is that the Montante wielder might have some armor on. Historically, they might have a breastplate and some other stuff. So maybe it could have been because in, in battle, on the battlefield, they absolutely would have. Yes. But in town, six to one half dozen the other. So yeah. we, we might need to run another experiment where this guy has some armor. Maybe on a helmet. I feel like most of the time we got um, the Montante guy was usually when his back was turned to like the back of the back head, head or to the arm. There weren't yeah. very many torso, torso shots, heads. so a curious wouldn't. Um, yeah, it wouldn't do much. Yeah, yeah and, and like they usually it was there depicted with if they had a helmet, sure. Helmet, yeah, maybe. Uh, final thoughts on this experiment, anybody? I feel nothing. Yeah, I think something that worked for us, and we had the advantage of being the last pair yeah. to be the two Montantes, right? Um, and so we watched you all get back into the corner. So what we did is we started further apart. Yes. And that, I think, changed the tide a little bit because it forced you all to divide, and it also gave us room to make uh, larger sentences. Yes. One of the things I did find on that last one was that if you can jam up the Montante, the long sword yeah. has the advantage, because this is only really good, uh, the minimum range is good, show me half sorting with that, the minimum range is there. So if I could get to here with this sword, I'm winning. And that did happen once, but it's so hard to get that close. Yeah. One yeah. thing that was interesting is a lot of times I got into the Montante guys because I'd come in, I'd, ki I'd kill a guy, and I couldn't get out, couldn't and get then out. the other guy would come and kill But you got to think about the fact that you'd probably get stuck in a little bit. Maybe not with a Q, but definitely with a thrust. If you thrust somebody, that sword's now in them, and you got three other guys throwing down on you. Especially for what we tended to happen was coming in, getting parried, finding the gap, and yeah. going for a slice. Yeah. But now somebody's going over here, and you have to disentangle, and now they're falling on top of it, and it takes too long to get back into the swing. I think that we didn't do the best job of replicating the fear of that, because we are, you know, it's, it's safe, and that's something we try again later, but I think it was still pretty good. We also all fence a lot, so we've lost that fear. Just <laughs> lost that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, okay. So this is a fun thought experiment. We can't really draw any major conclusions from this because these aren't real swords, but it's kind of interesting to see how this kind of combat would have maybe been. Does that mean we have to do it again? We have to yes. do it again. Yes! Let's